Welcome to episode three of my building, the HMS Victory. This is a miniaturized ship. It's very tiny, as you can tell. Uh, it has some nice detail to it. The model is not expensive. It's a great starter model, but you do not get very good instructions in case this is the first episode that you've watched. As you can see, I've made some good progress on building the HMS Victory. This is a very small ship. I've got some of the cannon ports in place. All the bones are in place. The lowest deck is in place and I've decided I'm not going to put the oak on that. It's just going to be too difficult. You can see on the back I've got framing for the planking that will go on the back of the ship also. I've been busy. I pre-stain a lot of the things and my view of staining you can only stain once. If I want it painted I can paint over the stain but if I paint it I cannot stain over the paint. So I've got a lot of the small things stained. Here's the upper deck getting ready and I'll put the um, all the equipment on it before I put it on the ship. This is some interesting work that I did, and I'll show you later in the video if you're interested. That goes on the back of the ship, very intricate, and I'm excited about that and how it turned out. So, let's, uh, let's show you what I did to get the ship to this point. Some supports that go up through here, and they are parts 21 and 22. As far as these parts go, they are both marked on the item itself, so you don't have to worry about them getting mixed up. Parts 21 and 22, one on the front of the ship, they actually attach to part number 20. This is 21, this is 22, and I am going to bevel that off because this is where the, the planking from the ship will come up and uh, tie in. There's a couple little notches here, so I'm not going to bevel up there. I'm not sure what those are for yet, but I do need to bevel right there at the bottom for sure. Again, that can either be done by hand with a file, or I've got a belt sander, miniature belt sander that I can do that with. So let me get that set, and I'll let you take a look at it. Okay, these are now glued in place. I may end up doing some beveling on the ends here. As soon as I found out what this little, there's a little ledge right there on all of them. So as soon as I find out what that's for, I'll uh, decide on the beveling. As you'll recall, I added these parts to the very front. They sandwich right in between that main rail that supports all the bones of the ship. So what I've done is I put some super glue in between those two sandwich pieces, clamped it, it's dry now, so I'm going to take this off. And once you have put this deck in place and re-glued all your supports, that makes these all very stable. Now you can see there's a little wiggle there, but now is when I want to go in and put some super glue in to hold these stable so that when I do the planking on here, it's all good and solid. But this lines everything up just how you want it. So don't glue any of these until you have this deck in place, these all re-glued and secured, and that's going to give you a nice straight hull to plank on. Next on the back of the ship are parts 23 and 24. These particular parts I had stained just in case parts of them might be seen. And again, I'm just going to dry fit these until I'm sure that they're exactly as I want them. Now there are some supports under here because this will also uh, receive planking. There are parts 28 through 30 
and they're quite small. So let me get them in place. They're just going to be um, supports for some of the planking that will go on the back of the ship. Here's a good example of why I dry fit first. When I put these, these parts in place, the lower one, it, it kind of shows like it's already in place when you glue those in. You can't. It will not fit together. What I've done is I've put 28 and 29, 30 and 31 in place, and now when that slides in, all these notches will fit in the notches in the back. Here they are in place with 28 are the two interior ones, then 29. Those are the ones that have to be in place to get them in the position on the ship. And then 30 and 31 with 30 being the one closer into the ship and 31, again 30, 31. Those you could glue into place if I turn that upside down it would fall over. I will probably end up beveling some of this. Um, I'll just have to wait and see. I don't want to eyeball it. It's small enough I can do it with a, a small file. So again those are not glued in place. I did that so that I can see how it fits and then I'll probably just hold it in place and put a little bit of uh, glue along the edge of each part or I may back it out a little bit and put it on the tabs. On part number 46, which is the lowest gun port rail, there's a, a bend to it. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's arched. So I'm going to say arched U-shaped goes up. So this and the one with no window in the end is up to the front of the ship. You may recall I mentioned a notch that I wasn't sure what it was for. Well, I've researched it and determined that it's a guide for your lowest level of cannon windows. And if you put it right in the notch, and there's actually a notch all along all these um, ribs. So if you rest that on that, it gives you a nice straight line. Then you just line it up so that it's in the right place for the the uh, cannon ports. And that'll bend right around. Well, in this case, I broke it. I was about to say that I'm going to take my plank bender and put a bend in this. So now I'll have to glue it first. So that's next. Nothing that a little super glue won't mend. So now I will get out my plank bender and gently make a curve in the front of this piece. And I would recommend soaking it in some water to make it softer because that uh, gun port window is very fragile. Now this I'll have to be extra careful. Gently apply heat and pressure to get the front part of it bent. I got this side in place. Rubber band holding that in until it dries. I was able to get this bend. It's It's got a little bit of a kink to it, not much. It's a shame that this has the bands because I could sand it out of it, but it has those uh, lasered in plank look to it so I can't really sand it and what I've done on this is I stained it a clear stain and then I'll also put a coat of tongue oil on it and that'll be my lightest portion of the ship so let me get this other side bent and glued on and continue this is only soaked a few minutes I tried a few different methods of plank bending and my favorite is the hot iron here but you do still have to be patient, especially if you're dealing with hardwood. When you're dealing where there's a real small crease like this, you cannot push down hard at all or you will snap that. So I'm really just resting 
this hot iron on that when I get to that point. And this entire piece should have a slight curve to it, so I'll just kind of gently heat the whole thing and just continue to try and get that curvature of the hull into it. Just makes it easier when you are going to glue it on. That's a pretty good bend. Okay, I think that's sufficient that I can glue it on. Just like the lowest part of the cannon openings, the next piece up, which is part number 45, it also is U-shaped. So you put the U-shape up against the ship. Bring this over where you can see it. So this will fit on top of there. That'll be the same thing. I need to uh, I need to bend it. So you can kind of start to see the look that I'm going for. I'm gonna have light and dark, and all the cannon openings will be the lighter color, and then in between it'll be dark. Something that I just discovered is that these gun ports you will be able to see in and see some of the unstained wood as far as the inside bones. Now, obviously it's subtle and once you get it covered, it's going to be dark in there. So if I were going to do it again, I would go ahead and stain all the supports for the planking. So now what I'm having to do is just go and kind of reach in with a brush take some stain and and darken those support rails that I put in that I talked about earlier and then also the support for the planks especially the ones that are close to a gun port because you could see at an angle and you'd see that it was white or light colored and I just think it should be dark here's another clue on these pieces notice the light colored one have the lines if you look closely, the ones that I've done dark, they also have one center uh, line right in the middle of them. And that indicates the outside. So actually this one goes on the, on the top. So we have that U-shaped curve kind of of the plank itself. And the line goes on the outside. And this one will go right up here. And I've determined they pretty much line up right with this very back edge of the support. And now I'll need to bend this one. And then the final uh, cannon port section goes above this. So once I get these on, I'm going to start planking the lower part of the ship before I proceed with the upper deck, putting the equipment on this deck. Uh, I'll do that after I get the planking done. And I've determined on these, all I need to do is dip it in the water, the part that I want to bend, because this wood is porous and thin. And then I can just go ahead and bend it without really soaking it. And you can see that slowly start to bend to that shape. This is a pretty tight bend. So I might even put in this side a little bit, get it just a little tighter. And then wherever it was wet, I kind of just run over it to get rid of the moisture because I don't want it to be swollen, although I don't think it would swell with just dipping it in the water. And that's pretty close to the shape that I need. So I'll put it on and we'll go from there. For this uh, last solid top piece of trim, I pretty much determined if you line it right up with that back edge, the front will be in the perfect position. Now let me turn this so you can see what I'm referring to. One post that comes out from the ship out this way, so that goes right to the edge of that opening. And that'll put it right about at the right spot. For this, I'm putting the super glue on the edge of the top, or this deck, I guess it's the lower deck. 
All right, let's get this on. I just hold it for about 10 seconds. Post, that'll hold that. Front's good. I've changed my mind on the back. I did stain it. And now I have painstakingly painted the carvings gold. And I'm just going to finish that up and let you watch. The window panes in any of the photographs of the original ship that I've found were also whatever color, you know, I'm going with gold. They're not necessarily gold, they're kind of a tan, but I'm going with gold. It's a very fine brush and then I just kind of tap it. I'm wearing magnifying glasses. And I find that I do better from one direction than another, so I just keep turning it. Sometimes I wet the brush in water a little bit and then somewhat dry it off. Kind of gives you an idea of what I'm shooting for. So I've got two more rows to go.